Hello, anatomy students! In this video, I'm going to explain the major arteries of the arm and thoracic wall and the direction of blood flow through them. From the left ventricle, blood moves through the aortic valve, up the ascending aorta, and continues into the arch of the aorta. The brachiocephalic trunk is the first and largest branch off the arch, supplying the right side of the head and neck, that's the cephalic part of its name, and the upper arm, that's the brachio part of its name. We're going to be focusing on the branches that supply the arm. There is only one brachiocephalic trunk, which is why it's not given a right or left designation. It solves a plumbing problem in that it directs the blood up and over the superior vena cava. The trunk divides into the right common carotid artery, which leads up into the neck, and the right subclavian artery, which leads into the right shoulder and upper arm. The right subclavian continues as an extension of the brachiocephalic trunk. It doesn't actually branch off. It's the same vessel, it's just given a different name as it moves through a different body region. The word subclavian means that it's located under the clavicle, and it branches into several arteries at the base of the neck, which go on to supply the area of the right upper arm. The right subclavian branches into the right vertebral artery, which leads into the neck, and then continues on into the region of the axilla, or armpit, as the right axillary artery. This artery begins near the inferior border of the first rib and ends as it crosses below the teres major muscle. It branches into various smaller arteries in the axilla that supply muscles of the shoulder, scapula, thoracic wall, and humerus. The right axillary continues into the arm as the right brachial artery. It begins just below the teres major and ends near the elbow when it divides into the radial and ulnar arteries. It supplies muscles of the arm, humerus, and elbow joint. The brachial is a superficial artery that you can actually palpate along the medial side of your arm. As it moves down toward the elbow, it curves laterally across the elbow through a region called the cubital fossa, this anterior region is a common site for detecting pulse and measuring blood pressure. The brachial artery branches into the right radial artery and the right ulnar arteries. The right radial is a direct continuation of the brachial artery. It runs along the lateral side of the forearm, that's the radius side, and superficially into the wrist. It supplies the muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm. Because the radial artery is so superficial at the wrist, it's often a common sight to measure pulse, called radial pulse. At the wrist, the radial artery branches into the superficial and deep branches, which then form anastomoses with branches from the ulnar artery. These branches go on to form the superficial and deep palmar arches of the hand. The right ulnar artery is the larger branch of the brachial artery, traveling along the medial side of the forearm, the ulna side, and then into the wrist. Like the brachial artery, the ulnar branches into superficial and deep branches that enter the hand, and then unite with branches of the radial artery to form the palmar arches of the hand. The ulnar supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm. The right superficial palmar arch is formed by the superficial branches of the ulnar and radial arteries and supplies the muscles, bones, joints, and skin of the palm and fingers. The arch curves across the palm at the bases of the metacarpals, giving rise to the common palmar digital arteries, which divide into the proper palmar digital arteries that supply the fingers. The right deep palmar arch is formed by the deep branches of the radial and ulnar arteries 
and supplies the muscles, bones, and joints of the palm and fingers. It curves across the palm near the bases of the metacarpals and branches into the palmar metacarpal arteries, which form anastomoses with the common palmar digital arteries from the superficial palmar arch. Going back to the aorta, the left common carotid artery is the second artery that branches directly from the arch and supplies the left side of the head and neck. The third and final branch of the arch is the left subclavian artery. Remember, there is no left brachiocephalic trunk. The left subclavian branches directly off the arch of the aorta. Like the right subclavian, it runs under the clavicle at the base of the neck, where it branches into the left vertebral artery. It then continues on as the left axillary artery before it leaves the trunk and moves into the left upper arm. It has the same blood distribution pattern as the right subclavian artery. As the arch continues downwards, it curves down as the descending aorta through the thoracic cavity, running close to the midline. While traveling through this region, it's commonly referred to as the thoracic aorta. As it travels down the thoracic cavity, it gives off many small branches called the visceral branches, which supply the viscera, the main organs of the thoracic cavity, and the parietal branches, which supply various structures and tissues of the thoracic wall. The visceral branches include the pericardial arteries, which supply the pericardium around the heart, the bronchial arteries, which supply the tissues of the bronchial tree and surrounding lung tissue, the esophageal arteries, which supply the tissues of the esophagus, the food tube leading to the stomach, and the mediastinal arteries, which supply various connective tissues and lymph nodes in the mediastinum. The parietal branches include the posterior intercostal arteries, which supply the skin, muscles, and ribs of the thoracic wall, along with the thoracic vertebrae, meninges, spinal cord, and mammary glands. The intercostals consist of nine pairs of arteries that branch off each side of the thoracic aorta and pass through the intercostal spaces between the ribs, which is what the word intercostal means. The parietal branches also include the subcostal arteries, which supply the skin, muscles, and ribs, along with the T12 vertebra, meninges, and spinal cord and the superior phrenic arteries, which branch off the lower portion of the thoracic aorta to supply the upper diaphragm and pleural membrane covering the diaphragm. 